Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video. My name's Dion and today I'm going through my daily trades. So this video isn't exactly for beginners nor is it financial advice. I'm going through my trading, talking to you about uh, how I'm managing my trades, what trades I'm thinking about taking. Uh, I trade my own strategy that I'm currently developing this and that. So yeah, let let's get straight into it. Uh, first off, we have a trade that I currently have open and I have been in this trade for almost two weeks, I'd like to say. Uh, not a great entry. You could see there was a significant drawdown, almost like half my risk. Pro yeah, more than half my risk drawdown. Uh, but we seem to have come to an area where prices reacted and come up. So I'm going to briefly explain this. Um, I know I just said this isn't for beginners, but you guys can learn something from here. So I went long because price is making higher highs and higher lows, as you can see. Uh, the drawdown which we currently was in, I feel like is a higher low compared to this one here. Now, when I first started trading, I was asking myself questions like, well, isn't this a, a lower high from here? Isn't this a lower low from here? And it is, isn't this a lower low from here? Well, considering the time frames, yes. But you can see this is just like little market noise. It is just like little bits and wiggles here and there. I like to zoom out into the higher time frames and sort of look at these big movements here. So yeah, this does look like a lower high at this point, but making a lower high does not invalidate the trade for me. If I'm going long, I need to see lower lows and lower highs, like maybe two rounds or something. I need to see a break in market structure. That's the most important thing for me, but I didn't see it here. What I did see was a double pattern, a double bottom pattern here. Uh, sorry, let me change this. So what I did see is a higher low in the form of a double bottom. So here we like price did dip down, but then it came straight up. Here we dipped into the same area and price reacted. You can see how bullish it was uh, moving up from here. So that tells me that this area is a strong area of liquidity. Price came down, gathered orders and bounced right back up. And right now we're making our way towards break even. Uh, I have no issues or complaints about this trade like I did say in yesterday's video. Uh, it made a higher low. We've seen a strong rise from there. So this trade's good. I'm going to let it run for however long it takes. Next trade here we have Euro GBP. You can see I don't have my uh, stop loss thing here. It's because I've already moved my stops to break even. So I've got 0% risk or I've got zero risk on this trade. Um, very similar to the other one, price did dip into this area of liquidity which I believe and it shot up straight from there. You can see what happened the last time price was in this area. We saw a strong rise and it did break quite a lot of these highs. So uh, we formed the double top at the, in this area here. Price came down, but I am still bullish in this. So yeah, I'm gonna stay in this trade for longer. Now here's a trade which I entered today and this I'll try and give you guys a full breakdown. We can see uh, in the past, like since what? late June-ish, you've been making lower lows and lower highs, right? So that's what we've been doing. We came up to this area, we found a area of support. So from here, even though I'm seeing lower lows and lower highs, when I see the support being formed, all that matters to me is what way is it going to break the support? If it breaks on the downside, then more than likely it's going to come down to this trend line. This trend line was formed once price so you could see we broke with very strong uh, bearish momentum. We came up here, we rejected the trend line. Well, this sort of created the trend line. It created the trend line and formed a lower high. I actually used the Fibonacci in this regards because this is, I feel like, a retracement. So we'll draw it out here. It came up to the 0.382, rejected that. And from that rejection, then I was started looking like, okay, we've bro we're on a downtrend because we're making lower lows and lower highs. We've broken through a support. We've come and we've came and tested the trend line. So now we've formed a lower high. So now for me, I'm thinking about what, what price does um, between this new high, which is just where this arrow is pointing, and this trend line. And depending how it reacts to that, that's how I'm gonna trade. So I was thinking my bias is short. So what I want to see is a break of this trend line and some sort of retracement to confirm that price is making a lower high, like another one. So we're going to the one hour, it's probably the most obvious here. What we did see was price break through, hovered, not exactly hovered, but it broke through this area, making a series of lower lows and lower highs on the smaller time frames, which I don't pay too much attention to, more so for entries. 
Now they did they made these lower lows and lower highs. Now price is coming up to test the trend line. It's a simple strategy like break and retest on trend lines and stuff. This is actually how I used to trade. So I have a lot of experience of how to trade this particular setup. So once I saw price reject this area here, I saw a very small double top here. On the smaller time frames, it's much obvious. We'll go into the 15 minute. So we saw a double top in like roughly the same area as the trend line. Trend lines aren't exactly perfect. They don't determine levels for me. They're just a guide or a rough area as to where price uh, is reacting to. So yeah, that's what I saw here, a rejection from there. And once I saw price make its way down, then I entered short. Currently we are in, like we're pretty much break even. We were going in like my direction. Now price is pulling back. I feel like it will pull back into this area here uh, before making a strong push down. In my opinion, this is a pretty solid trade. Uh, I'll put on some indicators. You can even see the moving averages. So the seven moving average is below the 20 and price is below them both. For me, that is a pretty strong bearish signal. So I do have, I don't usually use moving averages or Fibonacci, but recently I've started using them, using them for confirmation and just to have more confidence in the markets. I trade purely based on market structure. So usually my charts would just look like that, just trend lines and boxes. But I've started using it uh, as a part of my new strategy and so far so good. Um, I'm pretty confident with this trade, honestly. Uh, uh, this is actually a Fibonacci retracement, I believe. Yeah, so price has pulled up into the golden zone just, like it just touched it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it actually does make its way into the golden zone and see strong rejections to the downside from there. So that's all good. Now, in regards to my uh, trade management, so my stop losses, take profits, this and that, you can see I put a little note here and I'm going to read it out. It says, should I have put the stop loss here since the trade is based on the break of the trend line? It makes more sense to place stops above the last high above the trend line. Now, the reason why I put stops above here is because I like to put my stops up above uh, like a support or a resistance or an area of liquidity, something like that. And since this was the last uh, like major level, minor level that I can see, I don't just put it above that. I look for the last highs uh, in that area. So here is the last high above the resistance. So for me to be properly invalidated, like for this trade to be invalidated, it will need to break the last high and then break through this uh, main resist current resistance and through the last high for me to be invalidated. But the thing is, it works well when you're trading when the trade idea is based off of a uh, like a support or resistance. But right now, what the trigger for me to enter this trade was the trend line. So the whole idea of this trade is, okay, it has broken past the trend line, but to invalidate this, like, okay, so if it breaks through a trend line, right, what will invalidate it would be breaking back above the trend line. Just like how if you were trading, say, uh, price was coming up to a resistance. Say it kept bouncing around here and I was expecting it to break out. So we see a high, it breaks through the resistance, turning it into support, and I believe it was gonna head up there. The most uh, logical way to put like the stop loss obviously is below this area because this is, is the support. In this case, the trend line is acting as the resistance. So that's what I meant about this. Like, should I have put it like above this level? I'm not trading off this level. It was more so an indication as to the direction of where price was going. But since the trade is based off of this, which is the lower high and the trend line, I genuinely think it made makes much more sense to place my stop loss like that because this is what's going to invalidate my trade. So um, yeah, that's a like one to six. Yeah, one, one to six and a half risk to reward. Whereas what I have now is one to three. So uh, pretty much double. If I make double, uh, I mean, if price hits my profit, then I will make double the money. But then again, I have more breathing room in this one. And this is uh, this stop loss was placed more so with my style of swing trading. That's why I have like how many pips, like an 86 pip stop loss. It's because my take profit is much more than that. It's like 265. And my take profit is based on seasonal primes prediction, but I always go through it myself to see why do they want to put it here. So then I saw from this point down, there's no really strong walls of like support to hold us through. 
all we have is this area here so this is probably where there was some like a bit of price action um, probably some sort of um, like structure formed here and it's probably an area that will uh, where price can react to in the future so that's why I think they put it there I'm not too clear but yeah if it was say straight down without any of this price action then I feel like it would have been moved lower to say this area here where we can see uh, lots of wicks but for now it's I feel like this is appropriate this is based on seasonal prime and since they are a part of my strategy and trading plan at the moment I am actually relying on that in that regards but I still do most of my analysis most of my trades actually all of my analysis is based on my experience and my trading seasonal prime is there uh, just for guidance or confirmation so uh, I don't recommend it to anyone who is saying like trying to build a strategy or someone who's trying to find a strategy that's not what seasonal prime is for it's more so when you have your trading plan uh, mostly developed how you can sort of uh, use it as a part of your trading plan sort of using it as an add-on that's the best way I can describe it so that's what I'm currently using it for and yeah okay so pretty much that wraps it all up that's the end of the daily trades um, I was actually uh, happy to break this down for you guys I had fun doing it it makes sense because I get to talk back over it myself and really understand what I'm doing even though I do journal this um, before I take the trade but yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one tomorrow